Well, the thing about our faith and our religion is we're being called to a deeper level. But unlike the guitar, it doesn't really require the work from us. What it requires is a surrendering and an opening up to God. Because some of the most difficult things we need to do to incarnate this Christian faith of loving others as, as we love ourselves and loving our enemies can only come from God and saying yes to God. I have an example of somebody who's been able to do it. Her name is, is Corey Ten Boom. Have any of you heard of Corey Ten Boom? She's Dutch and she, she's a Christian, devout Christian who hid the Jews during World War II. Came from an incredible family and they hid Jews in what they called the angel crib in their house. They built a space. But eventually she and her sister are taken off to the concentration camps and she was managed to smuggle in a Bible. There's a movie on this called The Hiding Place. It's very, it's very moving. So she manages to keep herself sane and together through her entire time in the concentration camp by reading the Bible, remaining faithful to God, who remains faithful to her, and she is the light of Christ in the midst of all this incredible suffering. So when she gets out, she brings this message around the world and she's talking about her experience and her faith and how she managed to stay true to the love of Christ in the midst of all of this painful suffering until she gets to this one church. And she says here, but the place where the hunger for Christ was greatest was Germany. Germany was a land in ruin, cities of ashes and rubbles, but more terrifying still, minds and hearts of ashes. Just across the border was to feel the great weight that hung over the land. It was at a church service in Munich that I saw him, the former SS guard, who had stood at the shower room door in the processing center at the concentration camp. He was the first of our actual jailers that I had seen since that time. Suddenly it was all there, the room full of mocking men, the heaps of clothing, my sister's pain-blanched face. He came up to me as the church was emptying, beaming and bowing. How grateful I am for your message, Fraulein, he said. To think that, as you say, Jesus has washed my sins away. His hand was thrust out to shake mine. And I, who had preached so often to the people the need to forgive, kept my hand at my side. Even as the angry, vengeful thoughts boiled through me, I saw the sin of them. Lord Jesus Christ had died for this man. Was I going to ask for more? Lord Jesus, I prayed, forgive me and help me to forgive him. I tried to smile. I struggled to raise my hand. I could not. I felt nothing, not the slightest spark of warmth or charity. And so again, I breathed a silent prayer. Jesus, I cannot forgive him. Give your forgiveness. As I took his hand, the most incredible thing happened. From my shoulder, along my arm, and through my head, a current seemed to pass from me to him, while, my heart sp while into my heart sprang a love for this stranger that almost overwhelmed me. And so I discovered that it is not on our forgiveness any more than on our goodness that the world's healing hinges, but on Jesus. When Jesus tells us to love our enemies, Jesus gives, along with the command, the love itself. 